it's my great pleasure to introduce to you Art Tessu, a professor from Tilburg University. Hello, Art. How are you doing? I'm fine. Thank you. And you? <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks a lot. <laughs> we can work from home, so this is yes. how it should be. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Art, this is the expert's views part. So I will ask you a couple of very brief questions and you will throw some brief answers at me. Is okay. this good for you? Yeah, that's fine. Great. So let's start. What is your favorite article in environmental economics? I would say the, the Acid Rain Game by Karl-Jan Mella. It's a paper in 1989 in a conference volume. And uh, I like it because it's a, it's a unique combination of, uh, of relevance. The acid rain problem in Europe, that was um, uh, important at the time. Uh, it uses solid game theory. It uses empirical observations about um, sulfur and nitrogen oxides in Europe and the transportation. It uses cost models by, um, by the range project in the ASA in Vienna. And it has a very clever setup to do, uh, to do a cost-benefit analysis. And it reaches uh, very interesting conclusions about what the optimal uh, reductions are in Europe, in which countries. And, um, and also it shows what the impediments are for international agreements, because they're always winners and losers. And only an, a, a solid economic analysis can show you where, who the winners and losers are and uh, what has to be done to, uh, to reach an optimal solution for the problem. It sounds more like a book than a paper. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing because yeah, indeed, if you think about it, if combining all these things in just one paper. And another amazing thing is it's, uh, it's well known for the people who are interested in the subject, but it's, it appeared in a conference volume, so not even in the top journal or anything. But um, uh, I like the paper. It, it, it's a very good uh, example of how you should do economic re of environmental economic research. And um, it had a huge impact. What book should every environmental economist have read? Uh, for me, I, I, I would say you have to start with the book by Partha Das Gupta. It's called uh, Control of Resources. I think this was a beautiful book. Um, it has good theory, it has good formulation of the problems that were, uh, that were uh, in front of us. Uh, careful analysis, um, nicely written. A very good basis for, uh, for thinking about environmental economics. Good choice, I agree. <laughs> Who is your favorite environmental economist? Uh, I, I think it, I, would, I would like to say Kenneth Arrow. I mean, many people would say Kenneth Arrow, an environmental economist, because he's, he's a general economist. He's been there before we were thinking about environmental economics. But um, a large part of his life, this was his main area of, uh, of research and concern. And I met him a few times. I was happy enough to meet him. And I think he he's has the brightest mind that I ever met. So I would classify him as the best at this point. <laughs> and of course, you wrote with him. So <laughs> Yes, yes. So, yes, that's right. <laughs> Big honor, I could say. <laughs> uh, with whom would you like to write your next article and why? Uh, I would say with uh, Tassos Sepapadeas, my colleague in, uh, in Athens, in Greece. I wrote several papers with him, and it's, it's a joy to work with him and in many ways. He's a good friend. He has interesting ideas. We can work together very well, so I would like to do the next paper with him. Uh, what is the major contribution of tipping points and international games to environmental economics? Um, well, there, is, there are several, but I, maybe I can give you an example. Uh, if you, if the climate change problem is a major one, right, recently in environmental economics. And you cannot analyze the climate change problem without, on the one hand, tipping points, because it's about climate tipping. And you can also not analyze without game theory, because it's, uh, it's an international global pollution problem. So uh, the, the problem shows clearly that you need these two approaches to economics in order to do something uh, sensible. And, uh, um, what would you have been if you had not been an environmental economist? That I would not have existed. <laughs> <laughs> this was the only thing I wanted to that, do. That, you should have been an econometrician with a zero-one uh, answer. 
<laughs> no, no, I don't think that, that would have satisfied me. Or uh, <laughs> maybe I would have tried something completely different. Like uh, <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. <laughs> Egalitarianism, utilitarianism, equality of opportunity or libertarianism. What theory of justice would you prescribe to? Uh, I, I would say um, equality of opportunity. I think that's, that's the major thing that we have to, um, to guarantee. But this also means that there will be inequality, right? Because people are different. So in some sense, mixed with a little bit of egalitarianism, that, that would be my, uh, my favorite uh, approach. And, um, uh, do you believe in God? No, I'm afraid not. <laughs> <laughs> I believe in, in something that I don't understand, like nature or so, things that we don't understand, but I don't, I don't believe in a God, no. And, um, a carbon tax or a complex new Green Deal? Uh, a, a carbon tax, because... Um, I think that the government should not be involved with all the details of change. I mean, they're not the experts on every detail. So you have to sort of set out a general incentive and then let society uh, do the work. And, um... A true economist has spoken. <laughs> <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> If you could spend one hour with a person of your choice, who would it be and why? Yeah, that, I, I would I would like to say with uh, with Barack Obama. Maybe that's a little bit of a surprise because he's not an environmental economist. But uh, this is a sort of person. If he speaks, you want to listen. And and either he comes up with something new or he formulates something that you know, but in a in a very nice way. He's very thoughtful and particularly he's very articulate. He can formulate things in a way that I'm, I'm jealous of that. So I like I like to listen to him and spend time with him would be a joy. And, um, so I, I'll try to make sure that uh, he sees his interview. So <laughs> <laughs> I would be surprised, but who knows? <laughs> yeah. All right, Art. Now, please complete the following sentences. Tipping points for me are a beautiful and uh, important concept. If I could turn back time, I would... I would w not waste so much time as I did. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we wish every day, huh? Yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> The study of environmental economics is... It's crucial. Life on planet Earth in the year 2100 will be... Very different. <laughs> And I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Environmental economists are good at conveying solutions to policymakers because they are able to leave the ivory tower of academia. All right, so let's try this the other way around. Environmental economists are bad at conveying solutions to policymakers because they're not able to leave the ivory tower of academia. <laughs> Art, thank you very much for these speedy answers to my to the express views. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> It was fun. <laughs> Great. Art, all the best. Thank you. <laughs>